Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. I'll give a Vyas Puj talk. The nature of my relationship with my disciples is that you're all grown up and we've been together for many years. Some of you I initiated when we were both young, as far back as 1978 and none later than around 2004 when I stopped initiating. I've always taught you to be yourself and now almost without exception you know how you want to serve in the Krishna consciousness movement. But that doesn't mean you've stopped evolving. You want to advance more spiritually and taste the nectar for which we're always anxious. So our relationship is still relevant. In fact, as we grow older, our material duties and attractions tend to diminish and we become more ready to serve in spiritual life. My forte has been to teach the inner life of a preacher. As early as 1980, I published Japa Reform Notebook. It was banned in two GBC zones. They thought it was inappropriate for a, GBC, for a guru of ISKCON to admit he was challenged by Japa. Now, 40 years later, there's a flourishing Japa retreat movement where gurus are guiding devotees in how to improve in their Japa. Then I wrote Entering the Life of Prayer. This polarized devotees. Some saw it as a breath of fresh air but some senior devotees criticized me and saw me as becoming the next ISKCON guru deviant. I admitted that I had, was inspired by the Christian saints and in two instances I visited their places of pilgrimage. Now ISKCON has conferences where ecumenically devotees of different religions meet with this kind of devotees and openly discuss their faiths. I think they've been doing it at Potomac for 17 years. And Nittai Gursundar in Tennessee has been doing it for 10 years. The leading visionary in this field is Shona Garishi of the Oxford Center for Hindu Studies. There ISKCON scholars go and they earn their PhDs writing on Krishna conscious subjects. And then they become professors of religion in universities around the world. And ISKCON is the voice of Hinduism at Oxford. I wasn't interested in attending conferences, but I went through an intense phase in my life. When I read their books and expressed it in two books that I wrote. So, I 
I remind you of this because I'm still cultivating the inner life of a preacher. I practice an intense concentrated bhajan here in Stuyvesant Falls from midnight to 4 a.m. I've developed an attraction for the Rasa Shastras of Radha and Krishna and I post an installment every day from the books of the Acharyas and our Sampradaya. I don't say that you have to follow me in this, but in my stage of life, I get great relish from reading these books and they certainly won't harm you to read them. They're delightful pastimes and I never print anything that's too intimate or detailed in amorous affairs. Then I print my Japa report for the day. That's repetitious, but I usually put a little something different in every day. Some devotees have told me that they like the steadiness of the practice and it helps them in their japa. Then I print a drawing of my people in multicolored sports clothes, dancing and chanting with upraised arms. And I write a long stanza on Harinam, sometimes about Union Square. Then I write stanzas of my little life in the ashram, personal things, visitors, and excerpts from Srimad Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita that we read at mealtimes. Then I write stanzas on my worship of Radha Govinda. I strongly recommend that you read this website of illustrated daily activities as a way to keep in touch. The website has a wide reading too. Shama Goparupa publishes a version of it on Facebook and they have a statistic. It says 700 people like this website. 7,000. 7, That's Brihat Madranga in cyberspace. <laughs> 7,000 people like it. You should also write me letters occasionally. Let me know what you're doing and inquire from me. We have a vital and loving relationship. Prabhupada asked that after his disappearance, his disciples should initiate and become regular gurus. Prabhupada is your shiksha guru. And it may be that your relationship with him is more important than your relationship with me. But you should respect our relationship. Prabhupada has disappeared for many years and we've been together for many years. I initiated you into Harinam and linked you to Prabhupada and the Sampradaya. I gave you the Gayatri Mantras. We're a family. We're a branch on the Iskon tree which Prabhupada said is a branch of the original tree of Lord Chaitanya. In the future, my disciples will initiate and perpetuate the line. 
The branch rests on the books I have written. I've written about 15 books just on Prabhupada, including the authorized biography, Sri the Prabhupada Lilamrita. I've written about 15 books on sadhana or practice of Krishna consciousness. I've written poetry, fiction, and a long journal every day just right. We have about a hundred titles listed on ebooks like Kindle and Sony and other ebooks. This is becoming an increasingly popular way to read books. Ramapad Swami was telling me he's a frequent flyer and when he's on the plane he says three out of four people are reading literature on these electronic devices. So that's a very important place to have your books. But I still want to publish regular books. My disciple Nitai Das in India is working in cooperation with Sasi Chuta of GN Press and a disciple of Radhanath Swami, Krishna Chandra, for a plan to print five books a year, reprints, and distribute them to books to temples in India and send some to America. Nitai is the CEO of a huge garment factory in Bangladesh and he's constantly traveling around the world to meet customers. He works six hours, six days a week and he hardly has time for anything else. But he keeps his finger on Thompson's Press in New Delhi and sees how things are going with the printing. Sachi Sutta is also very busy with his equal vision. But he's using his office staff to help facilitate this printing. In all cases, the books need to be proofread. In some cases, they need new covers. In a few cases, they even need to be retyped. So it's going slowly but surely. We're not printing five books a year, a, one, a month. We printed one book, Prabhupada Smarnam. But it's going on. Last year I announced a plan that was too ambitious. I said we were going to try to fundraise $35,000 and print 100 copies of 100 books and distribute them to libraries and schools and temples, etc. A devotee volunteered to fundraise from rich patrons in a congregation, but she wasn't able to do anything. So that remains just a dream. I'd like to introduce you to a feature of my books by quoting from one of them. I'm reading.
reading from every day just right. This feature mostly has to do with the journals and the poems, although it also appears in the Sadhana books like Poor Man Reads the Bhagavatam. One thing I do in writing is not just recite the philosophy as I remember it, but I tell of my own experience in attempting to follow it. I may even express my experience of having doubts about something expressed in the philosophy and how I deal with these doubts. This is somewhat unusual for a presentation by a Vaishnava or a guru, but it's not without precedent, and we see it in the songs of Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Narottam Das Thakur. In reading some of my poems in Gentle Power, Manu Das was appreciating this method of my expression, and he wrote to me in a letter regarding the poems in Vrindavan. He said, the poems are revelatory and radical. And he quotes from one. Cold hand, yoga asanas, bizarre dreams, under the Indian quilt, then happy to awaken and discover I'm in Vrindavan a little longer. Manu commented, we have the beauty of Vrindavan and then the honest expressions of the experiencer. I love the existential expresser. You are the redresser of the imbalance in our society which brushes over the experiencer in favor of emphasizing the absolute standard on all of us. This inclination of mine to hold the experiencer or the person as important or even more important than what he's teaching is part of my makeup and was so even before I became a devotee. I expressed this in the book Memory in the Service of Krishna. Quote, Whenever I was subjected to an extended discourse, especially when a learned professor would speak on theoretical science, I would think, but what does the scientist do when he goes home? Who is he? Prabhupada would do this sometimes in his books. He would write, although I am crippled in so many ways, I think if I had a strong disciple like Dhruva Maharaj, he would take me back to Godhead. And he wrote, the sannyasis in the Krishna conscious movement should take up the preaching so that the guru can sit down and do nirjana bhajana and write books. And he wrote, some so-called swamis in India criticize the ISKCON movement for its deity worship in the West. They do not know Narada Muni's injunction to Dhruva Maharaj to do the deity worship according to time, place, and conveniences. These people do not know how to preach themselves. They cannot do anything, but they criticize the leader of the Krishna consciousness movement. We will go on with our business and tolerate them or kick on their face. Though those self-revelations are nice. I want to thank you for coming to this Jazz Pooj event. I have affection for all of you and how you're trying to practice bhakti yoga and how you're relating to me and how you're working in Prabhupada's movement. I appreciate your efforts and I want to reciprocate with you. There are six ways devotees exchange loving feelings as expressed in the Upadesamrita. First of all, they give in charity and then they accept charity. In the lecture that Prabhupada gave during my initiation in 1966, he used the word Guru Dakshin. It was the first time I heard it. And he explained the concept. 
He said, because he was giving us this knowledge of the absolute truth, we were obliged to him. We were in debt to him. And the way he wanted us to pay it was to tell others about Krishna. I thought, wow, this is heavy. Here I am getting initiated and I'm obliged for life. So you should give in charity. You should tell people about Krishna. And you should receive charity. You should read my books. I don't say you should read a hundred books. That would be putting you off. But maybe you could read 30 books in a lifetime. And then the Third and fourth exchanges are to reveal your mind and to inquire. So as I said about letter writing or in person, you should reveal your mind to me, what problems you're having or whatever, and then take my instructions and follow them. This is a loving exchange. And the fifth and sixth are to give prasadam and to accept prasadam. So sometimes Baladev cooks on my behalf and distributes to you. And sometimes someone like the avatar or someone cooks for me. And I take or anarta. And then there's the larger distribution of prasadam. To non-devotees and guests. These are loving exchanges. I've been expressing my realizations and my desires for a legacy. But I'd like to read from Shastra now and from Prabhupada's purports about the meaning of the spiritual master and the disciple. I'm reading from Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Leela, Chapter 1, The Spiritual Masters. Translation. I first offer my respectful obeisances at the lotus feet of my initiating spiritual master and all my instructing spiritual masters. Purport. The secret is that one must submissively listen to those who know perfectly the science of God, and one must begin the mode of service regulated by the preceptor. A devotee already attracted by the name, form, qualities, etc. of the Supreme Lord may be directed to his specific manner of devotional service. He need not waste time in approaching the Lord through logic. The expert spiritual master knows well how to engage his disciples' energy in the transcendental service of the Lord, and thus he engages a devotee in a specific devotional service according to his special tendency. A devotee must have only one initiating spiritual master, because in the scriptures, acceptance of more than one is always forbidden. There is no limit, however, to the number of instructing spiritual masters one may accept. Generally, a spiritual master who constantly instructs a disciple in spiritual science becomes his initiating spiritual master later on. One should always remember that a person who is reluctant to accept a spiritual master and be initiated is sure to be baffled in his endeavor to go back to Godhead. One who is not properly initiated may present himself as a great devotee, 
but in fact he is sure to encounter many stumbling blocks on his path of progress toward spiritual realization, with the result that he must continue his term of material existence without relief. Such a helpless person is compared to a ship without a rudder, for such a ship can never reach its destination. It is imperative, therefore, that one accept a spiritual master if he at all desires to gain the favor of the Lord. The service of the spiritual master is essential. If there is no chance to serve the spiritual master directly, a devotee should serve him by remembering his instructions. There is no difference between the spiritual master's instructions and the spiritual master himself. In his absence, therefore, his words of direction should be the pride of the disciple. If one thinks that he is above considering anyone else, including a spiritual master, he is at once an offender at the lotus feet of the Lord. Such an offender can never go back to Godhead. It is imperative that a serious person accept a bona fide spiritual master in terms of the Shastric injunctions. Purport. The relationship of a disciple with his spiritual master is as good as his relationship with the Supreme Lord. A spiritual master always represents himself as the humblest servitor of the personality of Godhead, but the disciple must look upon him as the manifested representation of Godhead. One should know the Acharya as myself and never disrespect him in any way. One should not envy him, thinking him an ordinary man, for he is the representative of all the demigods. This is a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam spoken by Lord Krishna when he was questioned by Uddhava. A spiritual master is not an enjoyer of facilities offered by his disciples. He is like a parent. Without the attentive service of his parent, a child cannot grow to manhood. Similarly, without the care of the spiritual master, one cannot rise to the plane of transcendental service. And one last quote. It's a verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam, from Krishna to Uddhava. was spoken by Uddhava. O oh my Lord, transcendental poets and experts in spiritual science could not fully express their indebtedness to you, even if they were endowed with the prolonged lifetime of Brahma, for you appear in two features, eternally as externally as the Acharya and internally as the super soul, to deliver the embodied living being by directing him how to welcome to you. I was saying that we are a family, so we should consider how to increase the family feeling. I have a few suggestions for this, and you have, may have some suggestions. You can get together and read my books. You can have discussion clubs. You can have reading clubs. Disciples of mine in different regions may have meetings a couple of times a year, like I have little batches of devotees in different places, a few in Alachua, a few in Radhadesh, a few in England, 
some in the New York, Philadelphia area, some in Italy, some in India, some in Trinidad, some in Guyana, and they can have meetings. I'm going to let you speak now. We have time for about 12 devotees to speak for five minutes each. Last year, one devotee was upset that she didn't get to speak. So if you don't get to speak in this period of time, maybe you can meet later and talk. But now devotees can raise their hands and I'll call on them. Leela Avatar.